passing along some updates on this as well, talking about U.S. aggression on a number of sites in Syria's desert areas, Syrian Iraqi border, resulting in a number of casualties and injuries. They do not detail exactly how many. Uh, they do call it U.S. aggression, so making it pretty clear, as our Jennifer Griffin has just stated, that these strikes have begun uh, to Jennifer Griffin now at the Pentagon. Jennifer. Neil, it's been a bit confusing over here this afternoon here at the Pentagon, but I do want to clarify, we can now report that uh, U.S. strikes in both Syria and Iraq at spots in at locations in both of those countries have begun. That is official from two U.S. defense officials. Earlier, when we were talking about some of those initial explosions in Syria, there is still some confusion about which military carried out those initial strikes. But we can say that what we have been expecting all afternoon and for days now, frankly, is that the U.S. campaign, led by U.S. Central Command, which will involve, we're told, air assets, as well as sea assets, as well as space assets, uh, this is going to be a multi-tiered campaign. It's going to last days. It's going to uh, strike multiple targets, um, I'm told, upwards of uh, a dozen to two dozen targets in uh, Syria and Iraq, targeting those Iranian prox proxy forces, the bases where they store the rockets, the drones, the command and control. Uh, and, and that is what they're going to be focusing on. We reported earlier today that the U.S. had B-1B Lancer bombers that had been deployed to the region uh, from bases uh, in, in in the U.K. Uh, those B-1B bombers, I would expect to be involved. That is the uh, Air Force's uh, it carries the largest conventional payload. Um, they, they will be involved. Uh, you can expect that, the, that, that there will be tomahawks involved. Um, you have a, a, sub, a submarine, the USS Florida, that is in the region. It has 150 tomahawks on board, as well as uh, the, uh, the U.S. Eisenhower. You have an air component with F-35s. F-16s, F-15s in the region, F-18s. Um, this is going to be a complex, uh, multi-layered uh, attack, and it is designed to, very, to send a very, very strong and serious message, I'm told, uh, to Tehran, as well as to the proxy forces on the ground. Neil. Um, maybe I'm just slow at the take, Jennifer. That, by, by the way, is an understatement. But um, I know these attacks are have begun, and the targets are in Iraq and Syria, but there was an initial battery of strikes. Uh, yes. And I'm, I'm wondering, if that wasn't us, or that was just, just wrong, who was it? No, it was there were strikes and there were explosions on the ground in Syria. Okay. And because of the timing, because we, we had been expecting, and some of uh, and, and U.S. Defense officials, who uh, are some of our best sources, uh, knew when the U.S. campaign was going to begin, and it was coincidence that it happened at about the same time, just I minutes see. apart. Those initial uh, explosions, we will at some point know what caused it, who caused it, uh, but we can now say that U.S. strikes have begun in both Syria and Iraq, and the targets are multiple, I'm told. They are going to focus on Iranian proxy groups, the same proxy groups that have been threatening U.S. troops and U.S. bases across Iraq and Syria 166 times since mid-October killing those three Americans, injuring 41 Americans uh, in the attack on Sunday, the drone that struck on the border between Syria and Jordan. Uh, but as we mentioned, Neil, this is a very complicated battle space with multiple militaries, with air forces, uh, whether it's Israel, Jordan, Russia, Syria, now the U.S. It, it, is go it is a complicated battle space, and that is why uh, CENTCOM has a plan, I'm told, that to try and thread the needle to send a very serious message without expanding this to a regional war. You, you mentioned CENTCOM having a plan. Is that why it, it doesn't make an announcement, that, that whatever we're doing today and these strikes, presumably, like you say, in Iraq and Syria, that's not the end of it. There are going to be more. It's going to be tiered, as they've been reporting, and maybe spread out over some days. You heard Defense Secretary Austin say yesterday this would not be a one-and-done. He said that the enemy—and he was referring to the Iranian proxies— uh, 
would not be deterred with a, uh, with a single airstrike. And that is why we have been expecting, and it's been, again, as I've said, the worst-kept secret in Washington, that this campaign was being uh, put together, was be going to be executed. It was a matter of time. Most believed the conventional wisdom that it would take place after the dignified transfer were complete. Uh, there are a lot of factors involved in this kind of thing. There's weather, uh, the, and, and the skies were clear tonight, and the U.S. Air Force and the Navy and, and uh, all of the combined forces in the Middle East, and they are, they are great at, at this hour, uh, they are carrying out these strikes uh, to reestablish deterrence and to respond to the killing of those Americans. Jennifer, thank you very much.